Hello and welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here with a great guest, JT Geary, CEO and founder of NOPS, hot startup. JT, welcome to this CUBE conversation. Hey, thanks John, thanks for having me. You it know, sounds like we know each other. We used to run into each other at meetups. So yeah, good to be here. It's, so, uh, it's yeah. fun to talk to you because I know you're, you've been you know, scratching the DevOps itch from the beginning. Um, before DevOps was DevOps, before infrastructure of code was infrastructure as code. All that's played out. So it's really a, a great ride. I know you had a good time doing it. A lot, a lot of action though. If you look at DevOps, it's kind of like this new, I won't say DevOps 2.0 because it's kind of cliche, but you're starting to see the maturization of companies besides the early adopters and the people who are hardcore adopting. And they realize this is amazing. And then they replatform in the cloud and they go, great, let's do more. And next thing you know, <laughs> they have an operations uh, issue and they got to really kind of stabilize and then also not break anything. So this is kind of the wheelhouse of what you guys are doing and ops um, reminds me of no ops, no operations, no, you know, we don't want to have a lot of extra stuff. This is a big thing. Take a, take a minute to explain the company, your, what you guys stand for and what you're all about. Yeah, so, you know, our main focus is more on the operation side, right? So, you know, the, the reason why you move to cloud uh, or the reason why you, you know, have DevOps practices, you want to go fast. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're building cloud infrastructure, you have to make trade-offs, right? You, you have to, in maybe some environment, uh, maybe you have to optimize for SLA and maybe another workload you have to optimize for, um, you know, maybe costs, right? So what we are on a mission to do is to make sure that companies are able to make the right trade-offs, right? We, we, we help companies to make sure all their workload, every single resource in the cloud is aligned with the business needs, you know? So we do a lot of cool things um, by like, you know, bringing accountability, mapping, and work close to different teams. Uh, but yeah, the end goal is, can we make sure that every single resource on AWS is aligned with the business needs? Yeah, and they're also adding stuff every reInvent, a zillion more services get announced. So a lot, a lot of stuff going on. I got to ask you while I got you here, what is the definition of cloud ops these days from your standpoint? And why is it important? A lot of folks are looking at this and they want to have stable operations. They love the cloud, really can't deny the cloud value at all. But Cloud ops has become a big topic. What is cloud ops and why is it important? Great. I think first of all, uh, like you just mentioned, right? Like Amazon keeps on launching more services, right? It's over 200. So the environment is very complex, right? And, uh, and then the complexity within the services is, is uh, pretty, uh, uh, you really need to be a domain expert to, for example, know everything about Blue. So, you know, operation to us is, let's say, if you find a critical issue, uh, let's say you want to, uh, you know, uh, enable multi-AZ on your RDS, for example, uh, and it's critical because, you know, you're running a, uh, you know, high availability workload on AWS. How do you follow up on that, right? To us, operation is how do you build a cloud backlog? How do you prioritize? How do you come together as a team to actually remediate those issues? No one is tackling that, John. Like everyone's surface is like, hey, here's a thousand things that are wrong with your environment. No one is focused on like, how do you go from these issues to prioritization, to backlog, to actually coming together as a team you know, and, and fixing some of those issues. That's that's what operation means to us. I know, it's totally hard because you know, sometimes you don't even know what's going on. I got to ask you, why why is it harder now? Why are people, I mean, I get the impression that people are like looking the other way, hope it, the, go, the problem kind of goes away. What are the challenges? What's the big blocker from getting at the root cause or, or trying to f solve these problems? What's the, the big thing that's holding people back? Yeah, I mean, when I first got into you know, IT, you know, I, I was working in data center and uh, every time we needed a server, you know, we had to ask for approvals, right? And you finally got a server. But nowadays, you know, anyone, uh, you know, could provision resources. And normally you have different people within the teams provisioning resources and you can have hundreds of different teams, right? 
uh, who are provisioning resources. So the complexity uh, and the speed that we are, you know, uh, provisioning resources across multiple people, it, it just continues to go, you know, higher and higher. So that's why, uh, you know, on the surface, it might look that, hey, this, you know, maybe the biggest instance uh, is, is, you know, aligned with the business need, you know, looking at the changes, it's hard to know are those aligned with the business need or not, right? So that's, that's, that's where the complexity comes in play. So a question I get a lot from people when we talk about DevOps and cloud, cloud ops or cloud management or whatever kind of buzzwords out there, it kind of comes down to cloud ops and cloud management. It seems to be the category people focus on. How is cloud ops different than say the traditional cloud management? Uh, and what yeah. impact does that have for customers and why should they care and why do they need NOPS? Right, so what, one of the things we do uh, and, and we do think that cloud operation is sort of the evolution from cloud management. We make sure that every single resource first, first of all, belongs in a workload. So, and you know, workload could be a group of microservices uh, and then uh, you know, every single workload has owners, like defined owners who are responsible for making sure they manage budget, they, they're responsible for security. That normally doesn't exist, right? Cloud is this like black box, you know, where multiple people are provisioning resources. You know, everyone tries to sort of build sort of a structure to kind of see like, what are these resources for? What are these resources for? As part of onboarding to NOPS, what we do, we actually, you know, analyze all your metadata. We, we create like five, six workloads. And then we say, here's a bucket where there's, there, there, this is totally unassigned, right? And then we actually walk them through assigning different roles. And also we walk them through to kind of look in, in their, under this unallocated resources and assign resources for those as well. So uh, once you're done, every single resource has clear definition, right? Is this a compliant, uh, you know, HIPAA workload? Uh, what are the run books? What is this for? John, I don't know if you, if you heard that before. Sometimes there are workloads running in cloud people don't know, don't even know who, who's the owner, right? So after you're done with NOPS and after you're managing NOPS, on, you know, uh, managing a workload on NOPS, you have full visibility and clear understanding of what are the, the the purpose of these workloads. It's I funny, see you nodding your head. It's <laughs> funny you mentioned the workloads being kind of uh, either not knowing the owners, but also we see people um, with the workloads, sometimes it's like throwing a, a switch and leaving the hose on, the water on, and next thing you know, they get the bill, they're like, oh my God, what happened? Why did I leave? What's going, what is this? So there's a lot of things that you could miss. This brings up the, the point you just uh, said and what you said earlier, aligning resources across the cloud uh, and, and having accountability. And then you, you mentioned at the top of this interview that aligning with the business needs. I find that fascinating. So I would like to, to take a minute to explain that because it sounds really hard. I get how you can align the resources and do some things, identify what's going on, accountability, kind of map that, that's, that's good tech. How does that, how do you get that to the alignment on the business side? Yeah, I mean, we start by, first of all, like I said, you know, we use machine learning to create these workloads. And then we ask basic questions about the workload. You know, what is this workload for? Uh, do you need to meet with uh, any kind of compliances for, for this workload? Uh, yeah, what is your SLA for this workload? You know, depending on that, we, we make recommendations. Uh, so we, we kind of ask those questions and we also walk them through where they create roles. Like we ask like who's responsible or creating budgets or managing security for this workload. And guess what? Also the, you know, the bucket where resources are unallocated for, we ask for, you know, owners for that as well. Like in this bucket, who, who's the owner for, uh, who's going to monitor the budget and things like that. So, you know, we ask, you know, we start by just asking the question, having teams complete that sort of information and also, you know, providing a little bit more information on how this aligns with the business needs. You know? Talk about the complexity side of it. I love that uh, conversation around the number of services. You said 200 services. I mean, depending how you count, what, what you call a service, it's in the thousands, <laughs> so many different things. Uh, knobs to turn on Amazon uh, and uh, web services. So why are people um, focused on the complexity and the partnering side? Because, you know, it's 
the cloud's an API based system. So you're dealing with a lot of different diverse resources. So you have complexity and diversity. Can you talk me through how that works? Because that's, that seems to be a tough beast to tame. The difference between the complexity of services and also working with other people. Yeah, for sure. Like it's, it's normal to have, um, you know, maybe thousands of uh, Lambda functions in your application. Um, we were working with a customer where within last month, there were 9 million containers that launched and uh, got terminated, right? They're, they're pretty much leveraging auto scaling and things like that. Uh, so these environments are like very complex. You know, there's a lot of moving pieces, uh, even, you know, depending on the type of services they're, they're using. So again, what we do, uh, you know, we, we, we look at tags, and we look at other variables like environments, and we look at who's provisioning resource, those resources, and we try to group them together. And that way there's accountability, uh, you know, if the cost goes up for one workload, we're able to show that team like, hey, your cost is going up. Uh, and also we can show uh, an unallocated bucket that, hey, if within last week, uh, your cost is you know $4,000 higher in the unallocated bucket. Where would you like to move this these resources to? <laughs> this is like an ongoing game, you know? You know, JT, I was talking with uh, my friend Jerry Chen, who's at Greylock Partners, he's a VC, he's been on theCUBE many times. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were talking about how you can build a business within the cloud, in the shadows of the cloud is what he called it. But I called it more the enabling side. And, and that's happened now, you're seeing the massive growth. I'm also talking to some CXOs, CIOs or CISOs, and they're like trying to figure out which companies that are evolving and growing to, to, be, to buy from, get, to get the technology. Uh, and they always say to me, John, I'm looking for game changing kind of impact. I'm looking for obviously efficiency and you know, enablement, you know, the classic kind of uh, criteria. So how would you guys position yourselves to those buyers out there that might want to look at you guys as a solution in ops? What game changing aspect of what you do is out there? How would you talk to that, that CIO or CISO or buyer um, out in the, in the enterprise? And, and the ISVs or NSPs, what, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest uh, the advantage, and I think right now it's a necessity, right? Uh, you hear these stories where, you know, people provision resources, they don't even know which project is, is it for, you know, it's just very hard to uh, govern the cloud environment, right? Uh, I, I believe we're the only tool where uh, you don't have to compromise on the speed, right? The whole reason you're in cloud because you want to innovate, you want to move faster. No one wants to throttle that, right? But I think what's, what's important, we need to make sure everything is aligned with the business value uh, and uh, and we, we allow people to do that. You know, we, 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 we can go fast at the same time, you can have some sort of guardrails so there are proper ownership, there's accountability, people are crap collaborating, uh, and people are also right-sizing, terminating resources they're not using. It's like, you know, I think if, if companies are looking for a tool that's going to drive better accountability on how people build and collaborate on cloud, I think it's probably the best solution. So people are evolving with the cloud and you mentioned terminating of services. That's a huge deal in cloud native. Things are being spun up and turned off all the time. So you need to have good logging, you have to have good visibility. Observability is one of the hottest buzzwords out there. We see a zillion companies saying, hey, we're observability, which is to me is just monitoring stuff, making sure <laughs> you're tracking everything. So when you have all this and you start to operationalize this next gen, next level cloud scale, cost optimization and visibility is huge. Um, what is the what is the secret sauce uh, for that you guys offer? Because the change management is a big one too. Teams are changing too. Cost, team accountability, all this is kind of it's not just speeds and feeds. There's it's it's kind of the intersection of both. What's your take on that reaction to that? Yeah, I think it's it's the delta, right? So change management, what you're really looking for is not a like a fire hose, right? <laughs> you're looking for what changed, uh, what the root cause, uh, who did it, what happened, right? Because 
it's totally normal for someone to provision maybe thousand or even you know million containers. But uh, how many of those got shut down? What is the delta? And uh, and uh, you know if if there is a there is an anomaly, what is the root cause, right? Uh, and how we fix it? So you know the way we approach change managers change management is a lot different. Uh, we really get to the root cause analysis and we really help companies to make, like really show what changed and how they can take action to remediate uh, the, if there were issues. I want to put a little plug in for you guys. I noticed you guys have a uh, really strong net promoter score uh, and you have happy customers also get partners, a lot of enablement there. You kind of got a lot of things going on. Um, explain what you guys are all about. How did you get here? Um, what's a day in the life of a customer that you're serving? Why then? Why are the scores so high? Um, take us through a, a use case of someone getting that value. Yeah, so I, I come from like a consulting background, John. So, um, you know, I was migrating companies to AWS uh, when EC2 was in beta. And then I, you know, founded a consulting company, you know, over 100 employees, really successful AWS premier partner called NClouds. And uh, so NOS was born there uh, because, because, you know, it was, it was born out of a consulting company. There are a lot of other partners who are leveraging the tool to help their customers. And it goes back to our point earlier, John, like Amazon has 200 services, right? I, we are noticing customers are open to work with partners and, uh, you know, with different partners to really help them to make sure they're making the right decisions when they are building on cloud. So a lot of the partners, a lot of the consulting companies are leveraging uh, NOPS to deliver value to their customers. As far as, uh, you know, uh, how we actually operate, you know, we, we pay attention to, uh, uh, you know, what what customers are looking for, what, what are the next sort of challenges uh, you know, customers are facing in a cloud environment. We're like super obsessed, you know, like we're trying to figure out how do we make sure every single resource is aligned with the business value without slowing companies down. So that really drives us, you know, we're constantly working with customers to, to stay true to that mission. And that's the ethos of DevOps, moving fast. Um, you know, the old quote Mark Zuckerberg used to have, move fast, break stuff. And then he revised it to move, move fast and make it stable, which is essentially an operational thing, right? So you're starting to see that maturity. I noticed that you guys also have a really uh, cool pricing model, very easy to get in uh, and you have a high end too. So talk us through about how to engage uh, with you guys. How do people get involved? Is it just click and just jump in? Are they buying software, they're buying services? Take a minute to explain how people can, can work with you. Yeah, it's just as it's, it's simple as just signing up on our site. You know, our pricing is tier model. Uh, and, uh, you know, once you sign up, if, if you do need help with, uh, you know, remediating high risk issues, we can bring in partners. We have a strong partner ecosystem. Uh, we could definitely uh, help you to introduce to the right partners. But, you know, it's as simple as just signing up and, uh, you know, just taking it out for a spin, I guess. <laughs> JT, great chatting with you. Been there from early days of DevOps, you know, born in the field, getting in, getting close to the customers. And, and you mentioned EC2 and beta, they just celebrate their 15th birthday. And I remember uh, one, one of my startups that didn't actually get off the off the blocks. They didn't even have custom domains at that time. It was still the long, okay. remember the long URLs. <laughs> everything was ephemeral, right? Like when you reached our server, everything would go away. <laughs> it was such a cool time. And I just remember saying to myself, man, every entrepreneur is going to use this service. Who would ever go out and buy and host a server? So, you know, you were there from the beginning and it's been great to see the success. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Oh, thanks, John. Okay, JT, thanks so much. This is a CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. Thank you.